In this video, we document our family's first trip to Santo Domingo where we got to enjoy the city and I was able to get cosmetic surgery from one of the top surgeons in La Republica Dominicana and heal at a luxury recovery house. So Amari and I took the bus early that morning with the plan for Ian and the kids to meet with us later that day. We were able to just take the bus straight to Santo Domingo for about $10. I'm gonna go there. It's fun. Y'all, this mall was huge. It was like about four stories. There were so many clothes that I was looking at thinking, I can't wait to have my surgery. There was a movie theaters, restaurants with fast food, salad, sushi, all options. Entertainment like virtual reality, an arcade, trampoline park, laser tag, inflatable world. And that wasn't even half of what they had. Around this time is when I noticed Amari was becoming sick. He didn't want to do anything, not even the slide. So just got to the Airbnb with Amari. He wasn't feeling well, so I sat him down. His appetites returned after being asleep all day in the bus, asleep all the time in the Uber, the mall. He had an accident, he threw up, but now he has an appetite, so he's eating. I'm gonna give you a quick view of our Airbnb right now. So here's our living room. So let me stop myself right there and go ahead and fast forward this whole tour. Things got worse when we found out there was a plumbing issue with our Airbnb and we had to vacate immediately while also trying to find a last minute Airbnb and communicate everything with Ian. And we finally got into our true Airbnb at nine o'clock at night. Y'all, it has been one of those nights. If you have a good eye, you probably noticed that this looks, at least the background, looks completely different than what it did the last shot. Cause I'm gonna ed edit it right now. So, got to the Airbnb and Amari was sick. And because he was sick, he's having stomach issues, needs to go to the bathroom. And that's when we found out that there was no water, which is not a big deal in La Republica Dominicana. We've had issues at our house in Cabrera where there's no water. So usually what happens is there's either A, the house has water stored in a separate place that can come into the house when the water from the tree system works. Press like a button, but the, but the Airbnb didn't have that. And then also, like at our house, we have a giant storage of water in case that doesn't work. So you can get water to wash your body, wash your clothes, wash dishes, and to flush toilets. They didn't have that either. So Marsh is filling up the toilet with a bunch of diarrhea, couldn't flush the toilet, he started to feel better, couldn't wash the dishes, couldn't wash our hands, and the whole time communicating with the host, like, hey, where's the water? She just said, hey, we cannot do this, we have to go. So now I'm literally like messaging people at like eight o'clock at night, or whatever time it is, like, hey, is hey, can we come to your Airbnb right now? We're having an issue, like, hey, is yours? And some people are like, we can come tomorrow morning, or sorry, I can't do it, it's too late. And we find an Airbnb host who's like, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm like, it's, we're just looking for something clean and with water, do you have that? She's like, yeah, we have it. No, this Airbnb is a bajillion times better. Um, not even just like, woohoo, we have water. Like, I just want something clean with water. It's bigger, it's more spacious, the decor is beautiful, the location's beautiful. I'll make sure I take some shots in the morning. We were able to shower, wash our bodies, um, eat, relax, get the kids into bed, finally at 11 o'clock. It's now 3 a.m. and I can't sleep. I think partially like I'm excited, I'm nervous, like it's more real now. I've been wanting to do this for two years now and life kept postponing it. And now I'm finally here and Tomorrow I go get up to do my lab. So oh, I guess it's today. <laughs> today in four more hours, I'm getting up to do my lab. So I get to go see the office. I'm like, I'm ready, y'all. In less than 72 hours, all this is going to be like a weight <laughs> lifted off my shoulders. Literally and physically, it's going to be a weight lifted off my shoulders.
It's morning time. E and I, I forgot the name of the building and the driver's coming to pick me up. So we're gonna go outside to see the actual name. Cause I'm like, where are we again? I know it's like Bay or something, but not really quite sure. Um, this area is super quiet. I actually probably should be whispering. Like you can see the cars behind us. Like this looks like probably like a middle class type of area. It's also gated, there's guards. You have to have fob to get in. So feel very safe and secure. And we're finally in Dominican Republic. It's finally about to happen. What if I just chicken out right now and say, never mind. What was she doing? You gonna get that welcome push. <laughs> nope, still doing it. I like guess as much trash as I've talked. Okay, y'all, I made it to the lab. I survived the car ride. No, look, the driver was actually the best driver that I've ever driven with in all of Latin America. Amazing. Um, so I'm really happy that I went with the recovery house driver. And then I also would have been lost getting here. Um, I got here, there's a few people in the waiting room. I've never felt so intimidated when recording my vlog. Um, which you guys probably don't know is before I start recording and there's people around, I always ask like, hey, is it okay if I record? Like, are you comfortable? Um, Cause I just think that's rude. Like just putting a camera in someone's face and be like, hello, hola, how are you? Like, I want to make sure that I have their consent. But it didn't seem like this is, I didn't feel comfortable even asking, so I just put my camera away. But right now I'm in this room and it's just two couches, no one's in here, so I can kind of whisper talk to let you guys know where I'm at. But I'm really excited to be here to do my lab results now. Yudiceli. Doctor G. It's more fácil para decir. Just took my picture, put my clothes back on, and like. This was ridiculously fast. Like, come on a Saturday if you can. Y'all, this thing was the devil. This test, it may have been harder than the surgery. No, that's doing too much, but for real. I had to breathe into this tube a certain way for them to be able to measure like my breathing. And I did it at least 50 times and it took like 20 minutes of footage. Also, I am no shape or form of smoker, but I'm sure the doctor thinks I'm a chain smoker. That test was no joke. That was harder than every test I ever took at Spelman, at Mary University, my high school. Y'all, I cannot breathe now. I am done, yes. That was not hard at all come on a Saturday and because I've said that and if anyone watches my vlog everyone's gonna come on Saturday and they're gonna say don't come on Saturday anymore like it was no one here but one other girl <laughs> Yolanda. Nice to meet you. So one of the best things about staying at Zen Vida Recovery House was all the staff was bilingual. So if you're a Spanish speaker or an English speaker, you will have no problems. Um, I will do a full review of the Recovery House in my stay 
in my post-op video but for now I'm just going to show you a quick tour of my room the living my living area yes this was my entire room to myself because I booked a double but my uh, person never showed up um, so I'll go ahead and do that tour right now outside today and then I'll, I'll open the door and the humidity is like Psh. yeah I've gotten used to it I was like oh it's nice outside oh uh, this is my second time here the first time I came I didn't do everything I wanted to do yeah um and then the pandemic hit and whatnot so I, came oh. back. I know I keep saying I'm excited but I really am excited I feel more ready this recovery house is is way better than expected they definitely need to market this better because it's bigger, it's cleaner, it's more modern. It is amazing here. Just had my snack. I'm about to go to take a short little nap. I'm so sleepy. Well, I'm in the Uber on the way back to Sambil, the mall that I went to with Lamari, and like, I used to talk about how crazy drivers were in Honduras. It is like NASCAR out here like Indy 500. So because there aren't a lot of toy stores in Cabrera, well actually there aren't any toys stores in Cabrera, we had let the kids know when we went to Santo Domingo that they could choose out one toy. So they had a blast looking at all the toys and deciding what they were going to get later. So they chose the Summit Trampoline Place, which is pretty awesome because they have go-karts, trampolines, arcade games, there's an obstacle course, there's a virtual reality room, like there's so much to do here. to go eat breakfast downstairs yesterday was so much fun like i had forgot about living in a major city because we have been in cabrera which is totally small town vibes nothing modern around beautiful views but again there's not modern amenities so like being at the mall and being able to like order fast food and go karting and laser tag and jumping around and you know uber eats like it has been just like whoo a breath of fresh air. So breakfast isn't quite ready yet, which is totally fine. It's pretty early um, and I can sit by the pool. It is so nice and tranquil out here. I'm the type of person that likes my peace. I knew I didn't want to be alone and I like the idea of having like sisters going through this together. 
staying in like a big house. You know, I, I am a part of a sorority. The location's so great. Like it is so beautiful. It's so spacious. I don't feel like I'm in a big major city right now at all. Right now it's just me and one girl in the entire house. But I think even if there was multiple girls and it was, you know, every single bed had someone in it, you would still have a lot of space. Chilling poolside with my boo. It's funny because I wore the Spelman shirt yesterday and today you were in the more house. Oh yeah. It's better than I thought a recovery house would be. I thought What it was your be, expectations, I wonder, like? Um, like a like a hospital vibe, <laughs> I guess. I honestly when I thought about what a recovery That's house I was, I was you know that movie The Notebook when they're at war and like they have like all the soldiers lined up and yeah. like <laughs> hospital bed I don't know why I was thinking that like everybody's lined up in hospital beds and rows like something off Madeline and like a nurse coming by to check on us all like it's not and so my, my husband was asking me like what's the story how'd you fall into this were you like did you wake up and say I want to start a recovery house in the Dominican right. Republic I had weight loss surgery yeah. and I lost 140 pounds I knew that from the very start that if I lost all this weight that I would have loose skin yeah. and so I knew right away that I would need plastic surgery. I did the weight loss surgery in Canada, yeah, I did it there, it was free. And then I started researching and I decided to come to the Dominican. I came all on my own. I stayed in a recovery house. Do you guys like this house? Yes. Okay, well there's really another reason why we're here. So you have to listen. So. Tomorrow, mommy's having surgery with the doctor. As usual, crazy drivers. So we are staying on the sidewalk right now. Plus, my mom's getting surgery. I left my mic Where inside. Are you staying? I'm staying right here. That's a recovery house. Yeah, it's oh. it's so nice inside. I okay. love it. And you're very. Who are you going to? Uh, Doctor Yudicelli. Yudicelli G. Doctor G. Okay. Okay. Yay, it's here. Yay, it's here! It's huge! Yeah, there's yes. a lot in there. There's I'm a excited. lot in there, girl. And I gave you a free drain bag. Thank you. Um, So, your drain bag matches this pillow. I don't know if you want to match or if you want to... Okay. I'm not even getting the BBL. What? No, I'm getting my boobs done. So, but... we can take this off and minus $30 if you want. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so, problem solved. This beauty in the box is heavy as... I don't know what, like it is so heavy. So now let's do some unboxing. Ugh. Look how big this thing is. I know it's gonna be like a box. Nonsense, like this is a whole luggage. Sorry about the ingredients. So recently I was gonna show you each item piece by piece, but I hate a long vlog, so here's everything all at once. Okay, so I said I was gonna like set this up all cute, but I don't have time for all that. So this is literally everything that was in the bag. Um, I'm so happy that I did not buy all this stuff individually. Like really, it's just so much easier. If you're like me and you don't feel like doing all that stuff, like I literally only brought five sundresses and maybe three pajamas. So now I'm going to start packing my bag for tonight. So Dr. G, his office reached out to me and they asked me, instead of coming to see that tomorrow, which is my surgery day, I'm coming tonight at 7 p.m. Now, if you are if you watch this whole vlog, you know that I came in on a Saturday to do my labs. So that means on Monday I'm supposed to meet the doctor, do the consultation, and have the actual procedure because they reviewed my labs. I'm all good to go. So I'm hoping that this means that when I get in on Monday morning, they're just reviewing everything that I want, marking me, and then we're just going right into surgery, so I'll be out by like that afternoon. If you could help me with my bag for tonight. That's so I'm being paranoid. What do I need to pack? <sighs> so, for your first night, you don't need to pack much of anything. That's adorable. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I'm not bringing my lunch with you, but I was like, you biggest lot. <laughs> Is there anything else I should bring? Um, anything else from Beauty in the Box? This, that's all I need, and some, <laughs> some undies underneath there yes, that it. you guys don't need to see. That's it. 
be in some um, some compression socks. Yeah. Oh, I didn't buy compression socks. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if she only would have brought those compression <laughs> socks. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You are hilarious. I just brought my California driver's license. Okay, I'll show you. I was leaving my passport at home and y'all ain't. Yeah, I fall asleep in my chest this time. Yay. It's time. I'm on my way to the clinic with beautiful people behind me. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, really, these people are like the best support team. I couldn't have asked for better people. Yay, okay. We made it. CSEP, right? Yes. Yes. CSEP egg man. So we just got the CSEP, it's about 7.15 at night. I'm gonna put the camera away just because, you know, this is a sensitive thing for some people and they probably might not want to be recorded. So I'll see you guys inside. Y'all, I just got here. I'm gonna be the first one tomorrow. So they have me checked in at seven o'clock at night. Y'all. I am here now. It took two years getting into a car accident, um, saving my money, losing my money, and now I'm finally here in the room. Just a few more hours, less than, less than 24 hours for sure. I'm 1,000 million fulfilling percent ready. <laughs>